Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel on my next video. Today we're going to go through the SVDS soup to nuts, go through all the parts, pieces, uh, a handful of builds as far as like max ergo, minimum recoil, um, a budget build, and then like my favorite build that I usually run when I do it. The SVD is probably one of the most powerful weapon systems in the game and nothing outclasses it at long range PvP. The hope here is that I can show some new players, you know, the builds and things like that so they don't waste money buying parts they don't need. And even some of you veteran players, some things you might not know about this weapon system. So the SVD shoots a 7.62x54R, and this hits harder than even the most powerful 7.62x51 rounds. And the best ammo is a fraction of the cost and more readily available than any other round in its class. It's also cheaper to build than an SA-58 and isn't hamstrung like the M700's bolt action fire rate. The downside to the SVD is its weight and lack of ergo. It can vary slightly, but usually you're running at over seven kilograms for the firearm itself. And if you have a suppressor on it, you're below 40 ergo. At a max ergo build with optics, you can get it to 54, but that's still not great. This issue with ergo really hurts how long you can ADS with this thing. So you have to watch your arm stamina very carefully when you're in a prolonged engagement. So for components, these will pretty be easy to go through, especially compared to some of my other gun builds. It uses the standard AK grip. So the RK3 is your go-to for the top ergo at plus 13, but between the stock grip and the RK3, there are dozens of choices and almost every number from seven, nine, 10, 12, all the way in between for every budget. It only has one stock and one barrel. So those are super easy. The barrels aren't sold by vendors either. So don't buy an SVDS that's broken down like these without barrels, because if you need to buy a barrel, you're gonna have a hard time doing it. They're not sold by vendors, and when they do show up, they're very expensive. On the barrel, you only have one gas tube to choose from and one muzzle brake, which also has the front sight that attaches to it. You do have the choice of the DRGL1 mount, which attaches to the bottom of the barrel and allows you to attach a laser device or a flashlight, but that's really your only option you have here. Back to the body rifle, this is the only part that is really complicated. You have the SVDS upper band, which says SVDS LB on the small icon for some reason. But anyway, it's this is necessary for three of the hand guards that you can put on this. These three are the XRS DRG, the SVD modern handguard, and then the stock handguard itself that comes with the standard SVD. These three handguards also use the standard dust cover that comes with the stock SVD. The SAG MK1 free float chassis does not require the SVDS upper band. It attaches without it. And it also attaches to the dovetail mount, so you won't be able to use any of those with this handguard on there either. Not that you would want to. It also requires its own custom dust cover, coincidentally called the SVDS custom dust cover. The SVDS modern handguard has one other attachment just for it called the modern rail. It adds negative 2% recoil and plus three ergo to the build. This is the handguard you need to use for the minimum recoil. Compared to the final build out with the MK1, you trade three ergo for 1% in recoil reduction. This is a product of the handguard and the dust covers that change. The XRS allows you to attach grips, flashlights, and, and lasers directly to it. The SVD mod and SAG MK1 require additional rails, but you can still attach parts like most firearms. Back to the SVDS upper band. This is where the rear sight attaches, or you can also use the TTO-1 instead. This will allow you to attach a host of small optics, just like you can on the AKs using the same part. For new users, one of the harder things to figure out is how to attach a suppressor, because it's one of the only firearms in game that works this way. There's a thread adapter that attaches to the muzzle brake and not to the barrel itself. This thread adapter is the Rotor 43, and from here you can attach the only suppressor available, which is the Rotor 43 7.62 by 54 muzzle brake. You only have two mags to choose from with this, the 10 rounder and the 20 rounder. The 20 rounders are pricey though, even if you have them unlocked at proper by level four. The difference between them is, is the negative one ergo and the speed modifiers to the 10 round. You have negative two ergo and no speed modifiers with the 20 round. With the ammo, you have quite a few choices here and a lot of them are viable. I have them ordered from lowest pen to highest. Your highest damage is seven and one round. It's one of the few rounds that can actually one tap the chest reliably up to level four armor. It has 45 penetration and 86 damage. The last three rounds will all three penetrate level six armor, but SNB is the special one in this group. It is extremely cheap. You can usually buy it for under 500 rubles a round and often down into the mid 300s. If you hit people in the chest with this, it will two tap them almost every time. This is the only round I run in my SVD and it's because it's cheap, consistent and effective. You have an unbelievable amount of sight options on this firearm, 
And those are all as personal as key bindings and visual settings. So I'll leave those for you to figure out. The only one thing that I want to mention is what I noticed with my field of view settings. And that's with the AR Pepper Burris mount. The TAC 30 and the Voodoo do not work really well on here. You end up with some really bad field of view simply because of the eye relief. So double check this in your hideout before you take this out to make sure you have a good eye relief based on your field of view. But you can use all of these sites and a lot more. For the budget builds and you're using a PSO, do not use the eye cup. This also ruins your eye relief and screws up how much you can actually see through the scope. You'll find this on Sturman's SVD when you kill him occasionally. So usually just pull it off so you have a gun that you can actually use. So for here, I had this blown up SVDS to kind of show you guys how this thing goes together. We'll take out some of the redundant parts and show you exactly how we would build this uh, for those that are uninitiated. Again, this can be pretty simple, but some of the stuff can be confusing. So we'll start off with the stock, the grip, the SVDS upper band. We'll throw the upper side on there. We'll put the barrel on, which I guess we'll have to move it. So let's move these guys out of the way a little bit. So we'll put the barrel on, then you gotta we'll unfold the stock so you can see what's going on. The dust cover goes on there. You have the handguard. This is another handguard you can put on in the same fashion if you want. The gas tube goes on the barrel. This goes on the uh, front of the barrel. Then you got the front sight that goes on there, your threaded adapter, your suppressor, a magazine, and then lastly, this piece that can go on the bottom of the barrel that allows you to attach a laser. And then from there, you can attach various sights, um, you know, like your PSO will go straight on there and then a laser can attach there. So with that all of the way, let's dive into the different builds. As a budget build, this is about as cheap as you can get it. A lot of people run some similar fashion to this in factory as part of their Punisher Part 6 task, but you can put a PSO on it and it's still ridiculously effective. Close up, the laser is really good at hip fire because if you unload with SNB into someone up close, they're going to go down quick. This build will run you about 28 to 35K in parts, depending on your traders, and then another 50 to 60 for the SVD. Both of these min-max builds are kind of meme-ish, but they are technically the highest ergo and lowest recoil builds. I like doing them like this because it shows some unknown parts and sometimes might introduce people to something different than they're used to running. So for the lowest recoil, which is 119 vert and 263 horizontal, you use the modern handguard and its rail attachment, an RK2, and then one of these EOTech hollow sights with a flip-up magnifier. That's because these give negative 1% recoil. Next, you put on the suppressor for its negative 3% recoil, and you're done. This exact build costs about 165 to 170K, depending on your traders, plus the SVD. But if you use different optics and grips or cut out the suppressor, you can get this way cheaper. The Max Ergo build, which is 55, uses the MK1 handguard, a swift grip, and then an NC Star ADO scope. This gives you really good zoom with, with only negative 2 Ergo. It also doesn't have a suppressor. You also need to use a 10 rod mag to get this max ergo, which I usually prefer a 20. You can argue that you can get it higher with iron sights, but that ruins how this rifle is intended to be used in my opinion. So I saw it as needing some kind of optic that has a zoom. This only runs you about 80K if you go this route, but the optics can affect this greatly either way. The difference between these two builds is so minimal though. Side by side, while different, the difference isn't large enough to be practical. I shot these as shown, and then with the same optic attached on them just to make sure they were all comparable. This last build is the build I use. And yes, that's a Reap IR on there. This thing really shines with the Reaper just because of the lack of the bullet drop inherent with a 7.62x54 round. Yep, players at the, the gazebo. Gazebo, gazebo, okay. Down low, they're getting ready to run up the hill. I see him. Drop one. In that tree they're dead they're both dead nice it's basically the ergo build but with a suppressor a canted sight and a reap ir i also take off the front sight and rear sight just to save that tiny bit of weight but you don't have to do that on the rare occasion i don't run a reap i usually have a voodoo but there are a lot of options here to suit your mission and your preferences this build here will run you about 170 to 175k without the primary optic so say 200 to 220 for anything non-reap ir I have occasionally used the Night Force with the 35 by 56 zoom, but it's a bit much. It sees so far, you're usually looking two or three raids into the future with it. Well, that wraps up the video. I hope you guys found it useful and got some information on it. If so, please hit like. Uh, if you want to see future content, hit subscribe. 
Both of those help the channel out a bunch. It also helps push this video up in the YouTube algorithm. I've done quite a few of these kind of style of guides on different firearms. So if you want to go check those out, please don't hesitate. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. I also do weekly hideout videos to show you how to maximize your profits there, as well as a few just general money-making guides and barter guides to help you with budgets and stuff on that end of the game. I stream on Twitch most evenings, so don't hesitate to come and say hi there. And we have a Discord full of tons of people that are willing to answer questions and help out. So check that out too. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in Tarkov.